Hello everyone, I'm Mark J. Sensei and welcome to my very first online lecture. So what we will be discussing today is dysmenorrhea and it's rather an interesting topic among women because it's um, almost all women can relate to because a lot of women are suffering or experiencing this one while it's, only an, it's also an interesting um, topic among guys also or men because it's an avenue or a way for us to understand more and appreciate more of our opposite sex especially those who have partners it's a way for us to appreciate and understand them because marami silang pinagdadaanan notice that um, in this lecture or in this discussion I'm more formal because I want my discussion to be, to be more direct simpler and more uh, I mean concise so yep I just want you to understand what I want you to understand. Oh, by the way, this presentation is not only made by yours truly, but also half of this lecture or discussion was also made by Dr. Sherin Eva Duliquez. So shout out to you, maraming salamat for participating in this discussion. I mean, being a part of this discussion. So without further ado, let's start with our discussion. So divided into four parts, I'm gonna be, the first part will be definition. And then the clinical definition, the risks for dysmenorrhea, whether these factors will increase or decrease your predisposition into dysmenorrhea. Um, and then the two types or two categories or divisions of dysmenorrhea, which could be primary or secondary dysmenorrhea. Now, the question is, what is dysmenorrhea? Definitely the the woman or yeah the female or your patient will come into your clinic with a chief complaint of pain, right? Masakit sa ang part, it's a cyclic, a painful cramping sensation where in the lower abdomen or in the midline of the abdomen. Aside from that also, it's not also a lot of women are not just feeling the painful sensation in their lower abdomen but it is also accompanied or associated with extra clinical manifestations other than pain. What are those? You can read here in this slide, sweating, tachycardia, headaches, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, as well as tremulousness. Now, um, when you are going to ask your patient or the woman when did this symptoms or signs and symptoms occur the one will tell you it will occur when before or during the her menstruation not after because 12 to 72 hours the the the, the pain and the other manifestations will gradually recover or will gradually disappear again take note pain plus other manifestations and this will occur before or during the menstruation moving on here you can see on this side um, um, a, a table with two columns decrease as well as increase so I'm gonna be starting with this one I'm more comfortable with the fewer details because definitely on the examination this is only the column that I'm gonna be remembering decrease risk Younger age at first childbirth. In other terms, yung mga maagang naglande. So, definitely ito yung mga isa. Well, aside from bearing a child, right, this is also one of the positive or um, maybe blessing or magandang nangyayari when you give birth to your first child at a younger age. And then, next is higher parity, mas marami kang anak. Physical exercise, of course, because definitely, generally, that's a healthy living habit. And vaginal delivery. Moving on to the next one, which will increase your risk to this menorrhea, are the following. If you are younger than 30 years old, if your BMI is less than 20, that means 19 and below. Although 19 in Asian BMI is normal. And then you also have premenstrual syndrome pelvic inflammatory disease or PIT usually these are caused by uh, gonorrhea, Neisseria, chlamydia and other microbes or STIs really STI related uh, microbes also have sterilization in common in common notion or generally defined as the inability of couples to conceive or partners to conceive within a specified period of course when you are talking about its medical definition I want you to remember that when you compare primary from secondary dysmenorrhea you um you can differentiate them 
as to whether there is an involved pelvic pathology, the, the occurrence also, yeah. and the rest, I'm going to be mentioning that at the end of my lecture, when we have already discussed each of these types of dysmenorrhea. But definitely, in terms of pelvic pathology, your primary dysmenorrhea does not or there is no pelvic pathology involvement as compared to your secondary dysmenorrhea which involves a pelvic pathology which could be gynecologic or non-gynecologic. And also, why is it that there is no obvious pelvic pathology for primary dysmenorrhea? It is because um, the pain or the other manifestations that are being experienced by the woman or by the patient is because of the effects of the products of arachidonic acid or arachidonic acid metabolites like prostaglandins and leukotrienes. And in terms of onset, um, most frequently, women younger than 20 years old, they are of primary dysmenorrhea. And most frequently, although I do not tell it always, but it's only most frequently, women more than or older than 20 years old are under secondary dysmenorrhea. They could have other pelvic diseases or I mean in other words, the, uh, the, the, the dysmenorrhea or the manifestations that they are presenting are brought about by other diseases or secondary to other diseases which are gynecologic or non-gynecologic. First, the primary dysmenorrhea. So we'll be tackling about the pathogenesis why is your patient suffering from this one? What are the culprits or what are the causes? And of course, the pathogenesis, the diagnosis, as well as the treatment or management approach for the patient. What I would just like you to remember is that the culprits are the products of arachidonic acids, which are prostaglandins, particularly prostaglandin F2-alpha and prostaglandin E2. And as well as, you also have on the on one side, leukotrienes. Uh, and what is their crime? Or what are their crimes? Oh well, what, the, what do they do? These prostaglandins or arachidonic acid metabolites will increase the myometrial contractions. By the way, um, during ovulatory cycle, the amounts of the products of arachidonic acid will increase during ovul ovulatory cycle. That is why during menstruation, um, there is an increase in the myometrial contractions brought about by this metabolites. Uh, when you recall your histology, there are three layers of uterus from inner to outer, your endometrium, and then your middle layer, which is your myometrium and your perimetrium. We will be focusing on the middle layer, which is your myometrium, because the, the muscle there, particularly the smooth muscle, is irregularly contracting, plus the contraction is increased, right? And because of these contractions, there is a decreased perfusion or decreased uterine blood flow, leading or resulting to ischemia. And by the way also, prostaglandins also can mediate or mediate sensitization and thus leading to the manifestation which is pain. On one side of this, um, on one side of this illustration, I mean a uh, slide or of this video, you will see an image of a female reproductive organ and then you will also see texts which are numbered. So let's start with this one here as i mentioned during ovulatory cycle part of the ovulatory cycle you have your corpus luteum regression now this is in the latter part of your luteal phase because from corpus luteum it will eventually regress into corpus albicans now why is corpus luteum regression here was mentioned it is because um, corpus luteum is a source of hormone, particularly progesterone, because progesterone is being produced, or this is the source. I mean, corpus luteum is the source of progesterone. Now, when there is corpus luteum regression, you will expect that the levels of progesterone will decrease. Now, what is the role of progesterone in relation to the pathogenesis of primary dysmenorrhea? The role of progesterone is it will inhibit the myometrial contraction 
and because there is decrease in progesterone expect that there will also an inhibition is it proper or non-inhibition is it right or decreased inhibition of myometrial contractions which is amplified by the increase in prostaglandins as i have said during ovulatory cycles prostaglandins or products of arachidonic acid will increase right and because of the decrease in the progesterone and in the increased amounts of prostaglandins and other metabolites what will happen there is an increase in the myometrial contractions because of the contraction go up to number four of the text there is reduced blood flow resulting into increased uterine activity uterine ischemia and sensitization of nerve terminals Most importantly, the pharmacologic, which is NSAIDs, do not forget this one, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs because these are the initial pharmacologic or medical therapy for primary dysmenorrhea. Why? In the pathway of arachidonic acid metabolism, they come from cell membrane phospholipids. These phospholipids will be metabolized by an enzyme known as phospholipase which will be metabolized into arachidonic acid. Now, where is the role of non-NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs on top? Or prior, the, uh, on top of this product, arachidonic acid. So, since phospholipase is inhibited, you expect that there will be no arachidonic acid. And obviously, there will be no prostaglandins as well as leukotriens, right? That is why this is the initial therapy. But other than NSAIDs, you can also resort to um, combined contraceptives. The components of combined contraceptives are estrogen as well as progesterone. Why? As I have said, the role of progesterone, right? During uh, ovulatory cycle when corpus luteum or the latter part of your luteal phase of ovulatory cycle, your corpus luteum will reg regress, right? If you can remember. There, and thereby, there will be decrease in the amounts of progesterone. That is why we increase the level of progesterone in order to inhibit myometrial contractions. And also estrogen in order to inhibit ovulation because of negative feedback. Then you could also use progestin only in the prevention of, of ovulation. But however, there is a limited um, study or clinical trial for this one. And even tocolytics. When you say tocolytics, this, are, this will relax your myometrium or this will, you know, um, yeah. Basically, this are uteri uterine myometrium relaxants. Now that's it for primary dysmenorrhea. We can now move on to secondary dysmenorrhea. So, secondary dysmenorrhea, as I have said, this is associated with pelvic pathology or pelvic conditions, which could be gynecologic or which could be non-gynecologic. I'm, I'm only highlighting some of this. So, we have already discussed secondary dysmenorrhea. Um, kalimutan nyo ng lahat. Huwag lang ito. That's it, everyone. I hope that you have learned something from me. Thank you so much for uh, being with me up to the last part of the lecture. And hopefully, you will still be there um, on my next online lectures. <laughs> 
if masusundan. So, yep. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyong pakikinig and hanggang sa muli ating pagkikita. Thank you.